Hello, and welcome to the Vlogging Pod. Tonight, we are joined by Belle Manuel. Hello, Belle. How are you this evening? I'm well. How are you? I can I cannot complain. I mean, I'm sure that I could start a list. <laughs> but uh, it's warm, and I, I just can't, you know what I mean? I can't start a huge list at this point because it's warm and the pool's warm. So I'm good. <laughs> we are having unseasonably cool weather for Southern California. It has been overcast for several days now. We are kind of shooketh in our part of the world right now. We're just a little oh, lost. Oh, I can imagine. You know what? When they say global warming, we really need to take it seriously, right? Right. <laughs> it's, it's severe y'all i live in a desert <laughs> <laughs> so does uh oh excuse me i'm gonna cough hold on let me mute my mic or i'm just gonna hack up here <clears throat> oh excuse me anyways uh so does uh laura laura is from arizona so she's in a very desert area as well she's in the real desert arizona's a different <laughs> level like i'm i'm rather close to death valley but arizona's like scary that's hot uh. Is the it? trash cans melt over there. Uh, now, I've never been. My husband um, grew up in Arizona, Colorado, Utah, and I know I'm missing something else. She says zero stars. <laughs> zero stars, Laura says. <laughs> Would not recommend. I got you, Laura. <laughs> Um, I keep telling her the humidity here sucks, so she would not like it here. But I know. used to live in Texas, and I'll I I will say I'll take dry heat any day. But where I am, it's it's the same for Laura. We get up to one twenty every year in the summer, so it doesn't matter at that at that level. It's just hot. You don't want to uh, exist. It's so hot out here. Uh, Walking to your car becomes a workout. Yeah. Well, I I don't know. I mean, like I said, I haven't ever been there, so I can't compare. But the humidity here. It just feels heavy in the air. Like you're like, oh, I can't yes. breathe. <laughs> my boyfriend is from Southern California. He's never lived in humidity. And when he came to visit my family, we were talking about how nice the day it was. It was so pretty outside. And we got in the car and he's like, how do you live like this? I'm drowning in the air. <laughs> and we're like, it's such a pretty day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't, it, the humidity has got me, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Um, now you've been on the program before, correct? Yes, ma'am. Oh, awesome! We like a repeat. <laughs> <laughs> we love them their repeats. You know, I was thinking today. Um, since you have been here before, sure. I thought it would be great to get um, your views as far as podcasts before we get into, you know, the, your newest work, which I know you're so excited about, and we are excited to talk to you about, Sure. but I, I would love to have you answer. Have you done podcasts before outside of, I, outside of ours? I think I've been on one other interview podcast, but that's it. Oh, okay. I think um, so. or maybe it was a, have you, a, a video. I don't remember. A video. I know a lot of people do the interviews um, via YouTube. Do they call themselves more podcasters in that that sense? Do you know? I know um, Catherine D. Graham on YouTube. I've been on her channel a couple of times. She, I believe she just calls it, she's a book blogger because her whole channel is about publishing in general. Um, mm -hmm. And then I was on an author panel on her channel where it was, that's what it, we called it. It was just an author panel. We didn't call it podcast or blog that time. Um, mm -hmm. but I think it's entertaining. I think there's an audience for it and people enjoy it. And I think the fact that book publishing is still a multi-billion dollar industry proves that, you know, readers mm -hmm. love content around reading. Right. That makes a valid point. So have you personally found it helpful for your books? I mean, say like the last time you're on it, did it help your, um, your release of your last book? <clears throat> I think it did. I was, it, it gave me something more to share on social media, which is always eye grabbing. That's not the exact same content as everything else I'm sharing, because especially for little indies, like when you're a little fish, like I am, when you don't have a big catalog, <laughs> well, when you don't have yeah. a big catalog, it's the same four books over and over again and people get tired of it. So participating on, you know, really nice podcasts like this, where it's really professional, gives us a chance to give readers that insight and readers who feel like they know you are more likely to keep coming to check out your books while you build your catalog. So I think it did. I had, I think I gained probably 10, 15 followers right after posting it. 
And then wow. now that I'm up to 1500 followers, I imagine after I post this one, it'll grow again because so it, I mean, I think it is, I think it's a very good start for indies. It's a good exposure. Any exposure is good exposure, but when it's a clean podcast, that's well put together and stuff that it looks better for us too. It gives us a better chance. Hmm. You know, I'm playing the music because you know what I heard? <laughs> we were professional. <laughs> it was a lot. It was a bunch of yada, yada, yada. You're professional. That's what I heard. <laughs> it's true, though. Well, thank you. We appreciate that. We really do. Um, so now as a reader, have you had the privilege to be able to listen to other podcasts where it comes to authors? Uh, yeah, I've listened to a couple of my author friends be on other ones. And then I've listened to a couple of podcasts in the past about um, writing craft in general and things like that. And I always found mm -hmm. those things interesting when I was driving to work and stuff. I can't remember them all, but I listened to quite a few where that's where I learned a bunch of stuff about formatting classes. Um, they talked about like things like Skillshare and how to go on YouTube. That's how I learned how to format books before I went to college and stuff was I heard a podcast talk about InDesign and I went and looked it up and I had never heard of this program before. Mm. So I think even as a reader, like I've found so many cool things like that. And I've found really interesting pe discussions where people break down books and stuff. I think that's really cool as a reader. I'm very obsessed with storytelling as a whole. <laughs> right. Um, I, I'll be honest with you. I find the book, the, the interviews where they're talking about the series, I get so invested in somebody else's writing. And I, I know I've written books too, and I'm probably about the worst author ever because, and I say that, okay, I say that, okay, first let me explain. <laughs> I was about to say, wait a minute. <laughs> okay, so I say that because as me as a reader, I want, before I pick up a series, I want all the books in the series, you know? And I have not finished a, one of my series. I mean, like I have several books in one and several, but I have not finished a series and I've been doing it for the last, what, 12 years. So I'm a bad writer. I'm a bad author. I'm very bad. I'm very bad. If I were a reader of my work, I'd be like, no, this girl's not serious. Where is all the books? <laughs> Do you not hey, want to get invested George, in this series? If George R. R. Martin can take 20 years to write one book, <laughs> I don't see why the rest of us can't. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yes, yes. I don't think he can complain. I really don't. I don't. Maybe that's the trick. Write one good book and then never write the sequel. Just keep them wanting the whole time. I know. That's well, you know. Yeah, I have. <laughs> I have. Um, I think what is what am I up to now? Six or seven books not finished. Oh, wow. <laughs> I know. I'm a horrible human being. I, I sit on my desk and it's not, you know, I'll, I'll write in them and I get invested, but then I'm very easily sidetracked. I mean, I've published 12 in my, my length of my time of writing, but okay. I, I'm just, I'll get an idea and I'll immediately want to go to that. I'm, you know what I mean? I'm easily sidetracked. Oh, yes. Like, and so it's very hard for me to focus just on, because my husband says, you need to stop writing all these series and just finish one. And I'm like, you're right. I know you're right. And then I turn around and I'll do it. <laughs> well, I can't say anything to that because I technically start, I try to keep my series in tandem almost. So when I had mm -hmm. my first series, I had the first book out and it was the only book I had out, which of course means it sold nada. And then when mm. the second book came out, I released the second book in one series, the first book in the next, and I spaced them out because I'd already had that other book waiting anyway. So I was already working mm -hmm. on the one after that. So then it became almost every six months I had a book in a series coming out. And now that one has finished, another one's in the works. Like it's, I found doing that is helpful, but I still bounce around yeah. constantly. I have a folder called unused and it's just all the <laughs> random ideas I get. Mm. Oh, the unused folder. Yeah. I can relate. I really can. I need, you know, I keep telling myself, and I tell Laura all the time, okay, this week, this week, I'm sitting down and I'm going to get it done. And the next thing we're doing this, and we're currently building um, an apartment for my mother. So I'm like yes. all over the place. Okay. It's just, it just feels like I can't, you know what I mean? It's yeah, like, focus it's on this, like focus on that. Yeah, right. So, um, now let me get this back in order here because <laughs> I'm all over the place even now. So when we talk about, podcast. Um, and just for those who are just tuning in, we've been very lucky. We have over 900 plus listeners 
over 2K downloads since we started the podcast. And we only we we're only up to 80 some podcasts. So to me, that's that's a successful thing right there. But you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, it is. You should but, be quite proud of those numbers. Well, thank you. But for those of you who may be just tuning in because we have Bell with us tonight, let me explain just a little bit. Um Originally, when we started doing the podcast, basically it was for all interests. But being that I am an author, my circle seems to be a lot about authors. But you don't just have to be here if you're a writer of books. Um, we like to support a lot of interests. But because of that, because I have this connection with authors, I'd love to touch base with you a little bit, Laura. I'm not sorry, Laura. Laura's on my mind. Laura's in the room I'm talking about you, girl. <laughs> Bell. <laughs> so okay. since we're talking, since we're talking about this, Bell, tell me about the impression, the persuasion that your connections have on you as an author, be in your circle. What does that bring to you as an author? Well, for one, so you just mean like anything that helps me as an author that comes from connections? Yes. Yes, please. Everything from podcast interviews. That's how I found your first sign up list was another author was like, Hey, are you in, would you be interested in doing interviews? And I was like, Oh my gosh, anything to get my name out there. Yes. And that's mm. how I got on your thing. And it's helped me whether it's a little, whether it's a lot, whether it's immensely it's helped and help is what matters. Um, mm. Cover artists, cover designers. Um, I've had cover designers that were also needing a book edited and we were both tight on cash. So service swap. So now I've got their name out there and they got my name out there and that brought more clients for both of us. Mm -hmm. Um, getting good writer opinions. If you're a writer that truly cares about your craft and you care about telling good stories and you care about crafting unique or as unique as anything can be, right? Cause all ideas, but if you're someone who cares about craft, finding other writers is invaluable those connections are because i feel my very first book i'm almost embarrassed of it because of where my writing is now and i imagine mm. 10 years from now i'll be embarrassed of the one i just did right because i like i've learned so many new cool things from other writers who see it differently and those connections help i've gotten in touch with better editors who are more on my storytelling style um, everything literally everything becomes easier when you have the right connections in the indie world in any way right well, and you offer editorial services as well, correct? Yes, that's my day job is I'm an editor, so. Yeah, well, that helps, right? I mean, did that come second after the books or was that always something that you were already doing before writing? Editing was always the goal. When I, when I started my degree, I knew I wanted to be an editor. My dream was to move to Los Angeles or New York City and work in the, you know, the big four world. Mm -hmm. um, but then the pan the panorama hit <laughs> yes i know right <laughs> and, and i honestly was like you know what all my other friends are doing freelance stuff i'm gonna try it and it's turned into a lucrative business and i now get to devote more of my time to writing instead of having to you know work my old job so it's nice i get to be a freelance editor which means i get paid to read books mm, <laughs> like the yeah, short and sweet right? of it that's what i'm paid to do like well, in all honesty, I can I can really relate to that because when I started, I have the sound booth. I have um <clears throat> for you for those who don't know who are just tuning in. Um this is called the Vlogging Pod, but the Vlogging Pod is an extension of She Shed Studios and that comes from the fact that I am working currently in a she shed. <laughs> so <clears throat> that has I have a sound booth and the sound booth goal has always been for me to be able to read others' books, just like what you were saying. It gives you a chance to read others' books. And for mm -hmm. me, that was the same premise. Although outside of doing my own book shed, I have not really done it for others. <laughs> but <laughs> it is the goal. It is the goal. <laughs> but I, I get totally what you're saying. Because <clears throat> finding that outside source to keep you still in your circle of familiarity, your career, to be able to do that, to include yourself to other authors is, I, I always say, I, I tell Laura this all the time, the, the, the most way to make money as an author is to find a service for other authors. Do you agree or disagree? Yeah, I could definitely agree with that. Absolutely. <clears throat> that makes sense. 
Yeah, I mean, as an author, I mean, don't get me wrong. We all know those those authors who really are pulling in the revenue. But when you're starting out, in the world. yes, yes. But it takes a while to get there. I mean, even oh, yeah. if even I if you have when Air Awakens came <clears throat> out, I remember her when she was getting started. It takes time. Yes, exactly. It does not happen instantaneously. Um, I know back when I was younger, we used to look at authors with those patches on their elbows on your jackets and you were all <laughs> you know and yes, so people the, the tweed jackets yes the tweed jackets and having this persona that there is um <clears throat> a wealth of education and money following that type of career but i think nowadays because there's so many indies it is harder and don't get me wrong i'm in indie as well so <clears throat> i'm not putting that entity down but it is oh, a no, time. I know it takes, exactly what you're saying yeah it takes a time to get your name out there it really does well, so, I mean, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. I was. Just, I agree with you. It does. It takes a lot of time. A lot of indies think that it's quick because they see the big four, mm-hmm. you know, throwing out these amazing books, but they don't. You don't actually see how hard it is for even those authors to earn out, <clears throat> or how hard it is for them to get their books noticed. I know great authors published by Bloomsbury, by Scholastic, that aren't as big as I feel they should be. Right? I think they're amazing. But they don't have as much or as many reviews as another. So, you know, it's hard. Right. Well, and, and it's always earth crushing when you start talking to someone. They're like, oh, you're an author? I'm like, yeah, do you read? No, I don't read. <laughs> <laughs> it hurts they're, just a little bit. Just a little yes, bit. Yes. Yes. Well, again, I'm an, I'm an Audible junkie, so I love Audibles. I hear such but, great things about audio, our audio books on Audible. <laughs> yes, I love Audible. So let's talk a little bit about your book. Um, it's from the Soul Stealer Saga. Now tell yes. us about this series and the newest coming. And I hope I don't ruin any pronunciation of Ruin and Wings. Am I getting that right? Yes, of Ruin and oh, Wings. Awesome. Good. So tell us so, a little bit about the series and, and the book. Of course. My Soul Stealer Saga is a new adult fantasy uh, it's dark fantasy it follows an assassin arena gaiman who is my female main character uh she's a bisexual half elf half human badass <laughs> mm. and this series is going from her being purchased out of servitude and becoming a soul stealer which is essentially an assassin for the dark throne or the underworld if you will and it's her having to go through these trials and tribulations of collecting the lost heirs of the dark throne and the way she has to collect them is not always pleasant and she tends to have to cross paths with some really bad 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 guys Hmm. nice i love the dark books i really do i love things with a dark twinge to them so yes when we're talking about your book, and I know you mentioned covers from doing work as far as getting your book out when you didn't have the funds and you're doing trade-offs for cover work. Tell sure. me about this current cover. <clears throat> I'm going to be honest with you. I found it very info. <laughs> tongue-tied, always figures. <laughs> the room is quiet. That's when I, she can't speak. It is a very influential imagery as being played out on this cover. And it's very dark. It is purple. And I even use I tried to use the try to use the right cover image to put my ads for it. But of it course. just I don't know. It just seems to say something to me. What was the exact image and how much say did you have in the cover work? So my cover designer is Tamea. Cannot pronounce her last name, so I'm not going to butcher it and possibly offend somebody. But her name is Tamea and she works for Fantastical Ink Book Designs. She is very much, she, with these covers, I gave her the prompt and I really wanted her take on it, but she very much includes me in every step of the way. And I've worked with her on several covers now and she's Uh awesome. So I told her, this is the color I want. I need a sword on it. I need shadows on it. Make it happen. And she did. And she has found a way to connect all of the books in my series thus far without making them look like copy paste covers they look like they go together um the imagery for this book was very much um so the weapons on the covers tend to give you or are intended to give you the reader a hint about which character to watch 
So this dagger, this blade, the sword that you see is a, another sword, which is something that the wardens in the book carry, which is extremely important because there's a certain warden who has to do some very painful tasks that mm. will hopefully leave my readers hurting. So, <laughs> mm. Now, how many books are we up to now? In the series or all together? All, well, the series and then all together, if you wouldn't mind. So I have three books in this series. The fourth one it will be the final one. It comes out next year. And then I have six total published and available right now for you to. Oh, hold on. That's my timer. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> should have warned. It should have paid. I've, I get too involved in the conversation and I forget all about the 20 minutes, but keep going. Uh, there's six of them fully available right now for you to grab. Well, the sixth one will be available in four days, but yes, they're all on Amazon right now. Nice. Yeah, I did. I did look it up on Amazon because that's where I get the cover work <laughs> for my promos. But I really do love this car, this cover in particular. I know that there's a sequence, like like what you're saying, that they all go together. But I don't know what it is about this purple one. It really spoke to me. I mean, it just seemed yes, layered it, it, and 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 influenced. Really really when it came in. Like I was very happy when she gave me the design. I was my critique group was all over. We love there. It, it's she did great. Each one seems to get better. She does a great yeah. job. Yeah, I would have to agree. This one is phenomenal. It really is. <clears throat> so, what would you say is next for you? What is the great big project that's next? Well, I've been working on this series for now thirteen months. <laughs> I've been trying to get the first book in this series down. It is on rewrites number four. So that is the next project that I am trying to get off the ground. Once the release of this is over and that's all passed, I'll be able to put more of my attention into it. But hopefully I will be able to get it down and then I'll be on your podcast to talk about that one in the future. <laughs> all right. All right. I like a plan. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I'm jealous. I'm jealous of you because you are goal oriented and you are getting the books done. I wish I could pull just a little bit of that for you and rub it all over me. So maybe it would push you in the right direction. Goal oriented. Goal oriented is definitely what most people use to describe. Like when I decided I was moving to California, I, it was a three day decision. And my boss, that's the last thing I remember talking to her about. She's like, when you say you're going to do something, you really do it. And I was like, I'm doing it. I'm moving to California. And it's it's been six years now and I'm, no regrets. <laughs> yeah, I, I really find that impressive. I really do. I mean, I you can can't. Do it too. <laughs> I know, I know. It's all in there. It's what I mean, but um, I don't know. I'll find an excuse not to make it happen. <laughs> you know what it is. It's because. What's that? It's because I'm like a 90s baby and all the movies that they shove down mm. our throats are about, you can be whatever you want to be. Yes. Yes. <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah. Some well, of us took it a little too seriously. <laughs> I know. Well, I just turned 50 this last year and... There, you, you lie. No. Yes. I really am. I'm 50. Yes. I, 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 I was guessing 42, 43. So go you. No, nope, I'm 50. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> No, but um, it's like, it's, I'll, I'll tell you like this. It's like this for me. When I, I, I put my goals in this sense, and don't get me wrong, I love still writing, okay? And I, when I start it, I have all the fury that's in me and get it going. But we, I've had some life up and down bumps here lately. And so yeah. I have been, you know, it's hard to get back on the horse. And it is. When you get knocked off of it, it really is. It is. And then when I learned, when I got a violin, I learned how to play Mary Had a Little Lamb, Twinkle Little Star, taught myself. And then I was like, goal completed. Check mark off. You know what I mean? And then, <laughs> same thing with quilts. I learned how to make a quilt. It wasn't the best quilt. I made them for all the, all my uh, nieces and nephews. And I was like, done, check, done. And I've never made another one since. So for me, do you know what I'm saying? That's what I'm talking about. I like one goal completed. I never published a book. I published it. I was surprised I got 12 out of that. <laughs> so. Hey, 12 is a huge accomplishment. 12 is amazing. Well, thank you. But I, I'm agree, I agree with you, though. I think as we, we write even more, we become better with it. Because sometimes I'll go back and I'll be like, oh, cringe. You know what I mean? Like, why? Why? <laughs> And then other times I'm like, I'm a mad genius. <laughs> you know I mean? I, I'll come across scenes where I'm like, when did I write this? this yes, right? And then the rest yes. of it, I'm like, oh. <laughs> yes, yes. That's exactly how I feel intensely. It's zero. 
I want to thank you so much for being on the program today, Belle. You were a delight, as always. And you you know you there's an open door to you to come back always because you're always a delight. Well, thank you. So expect it until you just get tired of me. <laughs> no, I doubt that. I doubt that we'll get tired of you anytime soon. I really love having the podcast, not just authors, but everyone in general. I love being able to connect and hear your stories, your life, and share them just as if like we're sitting down and having a cup of coffee. I think that's that's the greatest gift that um, I could give to myself. How's that? <laughs> There's a little Absolutely. bit of vanity there. <laughs> um, so for everyone who's waiting by on your tips and toes waiting for this little bit i'm gonna give you today amazon deal of the day and oh my god guys i love christopher knight's furniture this is the mid-century modern fabric armchair beige and white it's 10 percent off guys it's down from 199 to 179.99 link will be in the bio as always i want to thank you for joining us tonight thank you again bell bye bye until next time <laughs>